Welcome everyone, this is Polly Fields and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at Blaze News and Lotro and here at Lotro Players. And this week we have with us Krister. Hello. And Hi. Sinders. Hi, welcome it's back, good to Sinders. Be back. Good to be back. Good to be back. Yes. And this week we are getting ready for a release, or at least Standing Stones is getting ready for a release, but it's time for us to go over the final borer that was related to update 38. This was beta number three, and a couple of tweaks here and there that they had. First off, they fixed combat pets, not properly modifying damage taken from mobs when players were at higher difficulties. Hmm. Alright, I don't know whether the combat pets were... It sounded like they got wimpier. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I don't know if they were too powerful or too weak before or after or whatever. But they put to where it was intended to be. And class of main stat derivations. Main stats no longer give outgoing healing directly to classes which benefit offensively from tactical mastery. Classes which gain no offensive benefit from tactical mastery may receive two points of outgoing healing instead of one point of tactical mastery. And all classes once again receive three points of mastery rating from their primary main stat. And main stat values from all sources have been increased. As for the Bjorning, updated the Bjorning rewards in older instances to replace existing medium armor rewards with heavy armor and relevant jewelry rewards. How many years has this been? Oh, pshaw. Yeah, right. And a number of Bjorning skills had errant knockback effects on them. Only Final Strike and Savage Knockdown now sh should now have knockback effects. Composure is now affected by the Blue Line trade Animalistic. Counterattack now consumes the recently evaded effect gained from evades while counter is in effect. This will allow you to regain the effect thereafter rather than timing out after a fixed duration. And counter increases evade chance by 15% while active. This is an increase from 10%. As for the burglar, provoke cooldown is reduced by 2 seconds. For the captain, listen Christer. Shadow's, yeah, Shadow's lament cooldown has been reduced by 5 seconds. Oh, interesting. For the hunter, emergency preparation traps now deal the correct damage while when triggered. For the lore master, some tracery titles have been changed to refer to air lore rather than charged air for clarity. And burning embers can now deal partial pulses, so you won't lose damage when upgrading or downgrading embers. As for the Mariner, the West Wind should no longer create an overwhelming glow around allies when used. The Resistance Chance should work as expected for Mariner Thrown Pot skills. And Fire Pot Dot Pulses should now have the correct critical chance. As for quests, deeds, and adventure areas, for hell cold mitigation debuffs once again reduce rather than increase your cold That's mitigation. A <laughs> <laughs> I know, I I wish I knew about that earlier. <laughs> and quest Kurowind's cleansing should now properly display quest objectives and billboards. For items and rewards, the currency cap for Marks of Renewal has been increased to 750. Alright, I guess that could be useful since we all currently... 
since that is going to be the primary area we're about to head into, since Sparks Renewal is the special currency for King's Gondor. Why? I mean, would there be like a legal repercussion for you uh, having more than 750, you know? Is that for them to control the currency or, you know, what is that? Why is that limit there? You know, why do we, why do we only have 10,000 of the ancient script, you know? No well, limits. No limits, man. No limits. I have a feeling part of it is to keep people from, shall we say, on day one, let's say if you had 100,000 ancient script and it's someone using the 100,000 to instantly buy everything they need for their for their legendary items. Exactly. How many stories have we heard about people like buying, you know, spending $3,000 to get down to the front of the line, opening day for the big device that's being sold, and they get in there and they buy all the devices in the store before anybody else can. I don't know why I'm a, uh, a proponent of this. I have no capability to do this myself. I'm just going <laughs> for it. I have nothing. So. <laughs> Right. As, <laughs> as for miscellaneous updates, the Lua API for Corsair uh, attributes has been updated. The name of the table has been changed to Mariner attributes. The stance event and methods have been removed and replaced with balance. So th those must have been some early names they had inside the Lua, t Lua tables. And that's it for the changes in beta number three. That's the last beta in there, assuming that there isn't some major catastrophe because next week they are planning to release update 38, the Corsairs of Umbar. And that will include a level cap increase to level 150. Open up the rest of King's Gondor so that we could now go to Dol Amroth after the war instead of while they're having Corsair ships in their harbor. It's shanty time. And we get to visit uh, Umbar. And in light of this, Standing Still Games has been slowly revealing images of the members of the Kindred of the Coin. I don't know if either of you are familiar with the Kindred of the Coin. Well, one of our kinmates is the a Kindred of the Mithril Coin and uses the Mithril Coin to accomplish a variety of things all the time. But I have a feeling that they're not related. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with that. I am not familiar with it except what you told me earlier today. Yes. All right. Then in King's Gondor, we are introduced to the, near the end of chapter one, we are introduced to the kindred of the coin and given a basic idea who they are. We're told that there are seven members of this group and that they are the ones who are now running Umbar. So they have been slowly revealing it. And so far, they have someone that we met in Chapter 1 as being one of the members. They have, looks like a former Gondorian who apparently got Denethor mad at him. I have no idea what he did to get Denethor upset. So anyway, he decided to move to Umbar, apparently. There was a dwarf in there, and there's a half troll. So they have quite an eclectic crowd in there. Yeah, the half troll. That sounds intriguing. Yeah. And since there's a Colosseum in, in, the, in the main city in Umbar, and we were told by scenario that there is going to be a quest that's, that's where we're going to be fighting in the arena. I'm wondering if that's going to be our opponent. That sounds very plausible. Yes. Because, because he is a gladiator. 
the half troll is a gladiator. So yes, he is familiar with arena combat. And that is, and then there are a few more that are going, oh yes, and there's also a, a trainer of animals in there. But there are two more that haven't been revealed yet. I presume that one's going to be revealed tomorrow and the and another one, the final one, will be revealed on Monday. So we'll find out who they are. Just before the release of Update 38. There's got to be a Lord Master. There's just got to be. <laughs> There's got to be a Lord Master. <laughs> Why do you think there has to be a Lore Master in there? Well, you have the, the you know, the implication with the pets, you know. You have, uh, you have the, the, the uh, kind of the more managerial aspect of things. So you think a Lore Master, because what does a Lore Master do during combat? They sit back. They're reading a magazine, probably uh, on their laying on a chase lounge with a with an umbrella over them. Uh, occasionally throwing a fireball or something into the combat while we're all sweating and uh, bleeding and dying. I guess you play the Lord Master very differently than I. Do. Like rude, <laughs> rude. My Lord Master takes exception to this. She works very hard. Thank you very much. Way harder than yeah. captains. What? <laughs> Out here. <laughs> the captain is like playing a symphony. Uh -huh. Mo well, I can't play the symphony, but I'm saying the other captains who are better. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. And that's it for our game news for this week. So let's head into our store sales. And Cinders, would you like to read the store sales? Absolutely. For this week? I don't know if y'all will want me to with the dogs in the background, but um, you can go there and back again and get 30% off milestone skills, hurried traveler, returning traveler, advanced riding traits, rally horns, now through November 9th. And also the weekly coupon is free battle potion of restoration times five. Coupon code is battle cure, no spaces. B-A-T-T-L-E-C-U-R-E, -E, now through November 9th as well. Uh, yes, and it seems like that three of my Mariners suddenly have five-minute cooldowns <laughs> for this week, and I wonder why. I mean, it is a pretty good deal. I... I definitely stocked up on my milestones for M. So, because it's nice to be able to have somebody port you with your acorn, but it's not fantastic if you don't have somebody around to port you. And you have to do it yourself. So. Well, there is that. All right. And then, let's do some reminiscing. I was very... If you guys have any memories that you could think of relating to prophecies within the game. Oh jeez, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to listen to you guys. That'll help that'll help uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. trigger trigger some memories. So Oh you 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 don't have any memories of prophecies. Well uh, not not necessarily in game. I have uh, I have a myriad of, of examples of our kin making prophecies that didn't come true. Like <laughs> Maybe like like it'll, it'll only take, yeah, it'll only take one one try to get this done. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured I'll listen to yours, and then I feel like that'll that'll help me uh, coagulate. So, <laughs> all right. How about you? So as I'm reading that, and then thinking, having not played the entire storyline yet. Um, I'm not entirely sure about all of them, um, but I, I guess I would ask how we're defining prophecies, because I know, like, in part of the storyline, you stop in, like, Lothlorien, and you talk with Galadriel, and you, um, I want to say you get to actually look in her little scrying pool, um, Right. But other than that, I don't know where there are, like, specific prophecies. 
if you're thinking like predicting the yeah, future I, because I don't know that that really happens. Yeah, that is something that I w- that's one of the things is that I was trying to wonder is if anyone could think of any cases outside of the one in Lothal Ranch. Since that's obviously what that is what inspired this question for this week. Yeah, I can't. So, yeah, that's- like. In some games, not in Lotro, there's like a really explicit like you're the foretold person who's going to change the course of the f- planet or whatever it is. But Lotro really doesn't have that. Well, it, in a way it does because now you you might have gone through the starter stuff before this happened, but in I know that when I go through Arch, I presume there might be a version of this in other starting er- in Erdwin also, but I know that in Arch, it, when you're in the honey cabin, you could take a quest where you go to sleep and you get this Galadriel comes and speaks with you. And, you know, here, here you're a level what, five character at this point. Yeah. And Galadriel says all of these images that she sees and that you appear in a lot of these things that are happening. Yeah, I guess that could be counted as prophetic. I guess it's just not a sense of, like, your destiny is to do that, necessarily. Like, there's one specific path that you're going to tread. Um, I don't know. And it's not like the whole world is walking around and everybody sees you. And they're like, oh, you're the one we've been waiting for. Like, you're like, here, have my pants. I wasn't prepared to see you, but thanks for saving me. You know, like, or here, go pick up goat crap in Moria. Like, you know. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, we have been, I recall being recognized, but that was in Rohan riding into yeah. the town. This mighty hero, slayer of dragons, uh. And they hand me a mop and they say, "Go swat yeah. out the latrines." Yeah, but like, actually, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm important. But like, you're I don't recognized, care. Recognized, yeah. but you're not actually, like yeah. the child of the prophecy or whatever. Like, I don't know. Well, I actually, I was just remembering because there are a couple of interesting dreams that happen, in, like the one that that you have in the Gap of Rohan. That eventually sent you across to the Great River. I don't know that I've encountered that one yet. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all of my characters okay. have kind of skipped around with whoever I've been playing with. Ah, uh, okay. So, because that would have been, that would have been the transition to go from the, to go from the Isengard content to the Great River content. Where, that's where that's where you run to Nona. Well, actually, not the first time you run to Nona. It's when you run to Nona ag- again, so you so that you team up with her in the Great River. Yeah, I think I did the side quests and not the main storyline. Oh, oh, not no, not the main storyline. No, because I was with Sam. Okay, I'm pretty sure is what happened. Why does she does she skip the does she well, skip the main quest? Well, typically her characters have already done it. Oh, and so if I was doing it, I was probably clicking through rather than actually reading because it's easier to click through and keep going than to stop and read and then try and catch back up. Yeah. Oh, because she goes and leaves the area while you're trying to. Oh, she she, she doesn't stand around like I do waiting for you to finish reading. (laughs) It's not so much that she doesn't, but when she's in the same room as you doing that. There's yeah. like fidgeting and there's more of a, ah. a feeling of needing to rush, if that makes sense. Okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> she pulls out a yeah. revolver, starts clicking it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the reason why you didn't remember that particular way. Yeah, I think there are one or two items where dreams become into play and the like yeah. but right the, of course the most obvious case of a prophecy is the one with Lothorain and I was thinking about that in particular is because of how my is that when I was running my 
Mariner, I was reminded of this and the prophecy that she had sounds like that there's going to be an incident during this upcoming expansion that's going to be very, very relevant to the Mariners. Yeah. Um, correct me. We've run out of grog. <laughs> so, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like there's also like a situation, I want to say it's out of Galtrev um, as like the main hub for it, but it's like up in the mountains. No, it's not Galtrev because Galtrev is Angmar. It's the other direction. And you, know, you like go up into the mountains to this little area and their clans and you're working with them and then they're talking about how um like they saw ruin in the future am i misremembering that it, so that's probably great yeah, river now this so, well i know that there's one relating to in in rohan mm-hmm. where we're traveling with horn and nona and we go to this woman who lives in the back up up in the mountains and she and she's a, a seer. Se- a, yeah. She's a seer. Yes. And she talks about she talks about Horn dying at the gate about a great battle and and death and all that stuff relating to Horn. That's not the one I'm thinking of, but that's another good one. Okay. Um, if I figure out where it's actually from, I'll let you know. I'm going to Google it right now. Okay. Well, we all keep going. You can keep going. You don't have to wait for me to Google it. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> now, you you primarily play a hunter or So, what I go back and forth between Emerlina the Guard oh. and Cinderina the Lore Master. Oh, okay. Yes. Cinder- oh, that's, so, yes, that's right. Um, right now, oh, well, Emma's the highest level. And so she's the one that I've been playing on the most. Um, in some senses, she's also my favorite because she's so tiny and so innocent looking and she's so scary. It's so great. Um, and she can, like, withstand almost anything. Um, but what I like about Cinders is that yeah. you have to, like, really think and you have to be careful and pay attention and of course, you get pets. Yeah, <laughs> you get pets. Yes. Yeah, you know, I keep on forgetting what the guardian's prophecy is from Lothlorien. Is that one of the Pelinor ones? I guess I don't remember. Yeah, which which might make it, which probably makes it less intense for it. Now I know the lore master one because that's the one that's resolved and not. In Orthanc. Yeah. That's it. But I don't remember I the Guardians. I couldn't tell you offhand either because it's been a while since she's done any class quests. Yeah. And I've oh, I've literally okay. only done... You like, will be hard I've to kill. I've only done the class c- quests once. I think for Guardians except for like the first two. And that's because I started another Emerlina on one of the other servers. That I was running by herself, um, and she made it as far as right. the Lone Lands independently, and that's kind of where I ended up All dropping right. her. All right. Um, then let's head into our week in gaming. Krista, what were you up to? Well, uh, we assembled for our Friday night shenanigans. And our old uh, kin leader showed up again, so that was a good sign of maybe uh, some people returning on a more permanent basis. Easily able to get uh, six six band together, so we ran uh, did the same thing we did last week, which is uh, do vermin, and then we ran the um, doom of uh, what's it Dumbledore, I think. Karis Galebrin. Oh, that's right, Karis Galebrin. Yes, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was paying attention. I usually zone out before we uh, actually watch the story play out at the end of that uh, particular skirmish. And so I was watching it last night. It's just, uh, it's really hysterical that the entire uh, group is st- standing there watching Sauron and uh, Celebrimbor have their range. And this little orc comes out and stabs Celebrimbor, and somehow we don't instantly annihilate it 
uh, the moment it starts moving forward. That's uh, that was pretty. <laughs> it's pretty frustrating that we have to stand there. It's just like, um, no, no, this thing would be a puff of smoke before it got within five feet of him. So, uh, but I guess it was because Sauron was there. And he would, yeah, and Sauron probably had a bubble around him. But yeah, so that was we had a lot of fun and, and it went uh, very smoothly and. Our, uh, everybody was kind of uh, dreading the level cap increase just for the... Um, uh, I think everybody's just kind of nervous about really taking serious looks at their allies and the, and really having to k- kind of think about what you're going to do with them uh, at this yeah. point. And so, uh, but I think everybody's kind of looking forward to it as well because hopefully what will happen is we'll see even more people returning and then we can get start maybe getting raid together on a regular basis, which um, other than that, I've uh, been uh, playing ESO, and I uh, feel like my, my theory about how good I, my cosmetics are nowadays is holding fast. I, I saw at least a dozen people run up to me, pause, and just log off. And I know I know without a doubt that they just deleted their tunes right there. It was just like they, you know, once you've seen, once you've achieved perfection, what's the point? You know, what, what's the point of even going on anymore? You might as well just delete that tune and start over again. So, uh-huh. uh, so it's going really well. I think I found the perfect outfit. Um, I'll have to show it to you guys next time. So, and let's see. We'll do. We'll see how many of you guys delete your tunes. Yeah. Okay. Every, time, <laughs> every time you have a perfect outfit, it seems like the following week you have another more perfect outfit. Well, there's the, that's the thing about perfection is um, it's technically unachievable. So that's. <laughs> <laughs> So thusly, you're just finding that little maneuver that you can do, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And then uh, I've been playing, a, I, I really liked the Galactic Civilization series, and so I picked up the new one, and now I'm starting to actually really get into it and enjoy it quite a bit. So that was my week, and Cinders, what did you get up to? So, um, I, st- starting with last Sunday, I went on the shortest ever spelunking trip in Minecraft with Pineleaf. Um, I was like, let's go spelunking. And Pineleaf was like, oh, I guess I can go spelunking. And we like walked around a corner and suddenly we're back out on the other side of the mountain. And I was like, oh, well, that wasn't very exciting. And then I took like uh, four or five steps and promptly fell into a much larger cave. Um, And then we ended up going on another epic spelunking adventure to light all of the cavern spaces that we could. Um, And it was not carefully planned. And there were multiple deaths. And finally, at the end, I was just like, forget this. I don't need my stuff that much. (laughs) I can get new stuff. We'll just leave it. Um, I just just left left it after falling to my death. So I was killed by skeletons and witches and creepers and then when i it was when i (laughs) fell to my death that i was like forget this i'm not gonna try and go down there and get it that's just too much work um and then um today i dusted emerlina off it's been about four months since i had played um and then pine leaf helped me pick up a few levels and work through some of the gundabad storyline um into the next area in preparation for the new content that's coming out and i am now the pro- proud possessor of many milestones um i think i'm up to 10 so <laughs> to on emerlina milestones. yeah I, I, pre- I presume five minute oh, yeah. cooldowns so that you could actually yeah so <laughs> i've had the five minute cooldowns for a while from trying to do um Oh, all of the in and ale league um, ports. And so oh. we had it set up so that I had enough ports that with um, the horns, I could, and sands, we could teleport to wherever we needed to and then summon the other person because she could use my acorn or I could use a summoning horn um, so that we could get them right. done in like 30 minutes. Um with all these ports, Cinder, do you feel important? Yes, yes, I do. Um, <laughs> and just for the record, we've also tried it with like a captain and a guardian, and that doesn't work. Um, <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a bad combo. <laughs> 
so that was one of our brilliant ideas was, oh, I'll make a captain and we'll run with your guardian and it'll be fantastic because one of us has a summoning <laughs> horn and the other has an acorn, except the acorn serves the same function as the summoning horn. <laughs> So the so one the person horn. who has the acorn is the one who can't summon the other person to them. Um, it really defeated the purpose. So we went back to the hunter That's awesome. and guardian combination. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like the guardian captain combo too because it's like, hey, let's get together and do no damage. <laughs> right, takes forever to kill anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, do it with the mariner. Oh, oh, none of the. Oh, none of the inns are next to water. But that was super cool, though. With a mar- <laughs> Sienz was telling me today, with a mariner and a hunter, though, you can port basically yeah. anywhere. I was like, oh, that is <laughs> awesome. But also, like, running around with Pine Leaf's mariner today, um, like, my guardian would walk up and be like, hey, and then they would be dead. And that was fantastic. <laughs> Wait, so... Pine Leaf's Mariner was doing the killing or something else? Yeah, Yeah, a 140 Mariner. And here I was on my little Hobbit, 132, Hobbit Guardian going, hey, and then splat. It was great. (laughs) And I'd like go pick stuff up and be like, behind me, as I'm running back. It was wonderful. Pine Leaf, how was your week? All right, I'll begin with my Mariner. In addition to what I did with you, I also visited Mordor long enough so I could finally complete the Mordor class quest for the Mariner, since I had done it for most of the other classes I played, but I hadn't had a chance to do it for the Mariner yet. And then during the field trip, we had our little crew of Mariners there who headed up to Herna and did the quest within that area. And in ESO, I attempted to do the Endless Archive and... It ended? (laughs) Yeah, it it seemed to end quite often whenever I tried it. (laughs) (laughs) It ended before before I reached the first uh, whatever they call the arc. Yeah, before I reached the first arc boss, I yeah, the first, I guess, the arc of the archives is the, what you have in there. So, yeah, kept on failing in there. And, of course, it's not exactly my top favorite style of content because it's, yes, let's go and make content designed for one or two players that requires you to have the mentality of a raider. Because, yeah, I know, I know that if you like to raid you either need to have a very very good sense of humor about dying or you just like doing things over and over and over again until you're finally to complete it <laughs> you know, just, no matter how many times you get killed isn't that uh, kind of like psych- the definition for psychosis as well well do it over and over and well, over expecting well, a different result whether or not you get any better Right. Yeah, that's the problem. I think. I mean, if you get better at it, then you could. Then it's reasonable to expect eventually better results. <laughs> but in any case, that was my week in gaming. We currently have 13 supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to join this illustrious rate of players and help support Loach players, you go to the donations page. We support the Players Alliance on Patreon. The money we use for podcast hosting, website hosting, and to pay for our live shows. The Players Alliance has two shows each week on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have a Loach Players News and DDO Players News records when Drac is available. And if you would like to send us an email, you can send it to podcast at loachplayers.com. And that's all for tonight. And this is Pilot Needles reminding you to skirmish responsibly. <laughs>